Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to all of you on this first Sunday of Christmas. A day, a festival, when we remember our own saint, Saint John the Evangelist. Of course, our church, Saint John the Evangelist. I hope that you have all had a good Christmas day, different this year maybe, but a good Christmas day. Will you join with me now as we sing our opening hymn? the light of the world has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts in his light let us examine ourselves and confess our sins you were born for our salvation lord have mercy lord have mercy you came as savior to bring wholeness and peace christ have mercy christ have mercy you come to bring light into the darkness of our lives Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. Merciful Lord, <clears throat> cast your bright beams of light upon the church, that being enlightened by the teaching of your blessed apostle and evangelist, St. John, we may so walk in the light of your truth, that we may at last attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your incarnate Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We listen to the scriptures. The epistle reading is from 1 John, chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. 
so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After this he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumour spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written about them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're on mute. We can't hear you. We can see you but we can't hear you. For the past nine months, there are a couple of the phrases that we've heard time and time again, often much to the amusement of others when we see someone merrily telling a story that none of us can hear as we try and memo to them that they can't be heard. Morning prayer is a classic. Zoom, online, live stream, all these are words that have entered our vocabulary. Along with all these new things have come the challenges of having to acquire new skills. And for each one of us, we've been learning as we go. I'm sure that if we reflect over these past nine months, there are many things that each of us have done that we would have never imagined possible at the start of the first lockdown back in March. Back then, if we said Zoom, it meant to go fast. Oh, how the meaning of Zoom has changed this year. It's even, it seems, taken on the nature of a verb. I'll Zoom you later. And indeed, after the service today, at 11.30 a.m., if you're watching this on Sunday morning, we'll be Zooming for coffee time. And what fun that has been as well. This year, each one of us doing what we can, in whatever ways we can, to help one another in whatever ways we can over this time. We've all faced and we continue to face many challenges. 
I, for one, am so grateful for the prayer support and encouragement that has been shared with me by so many of you over this time. You might not think it means much, but it means a great deal and I really am very grateful. Each one of us has been called to use the gifts that we have during this time. Being the person that God has called us to be in the place where we are and to focus on what we can do and not on what we can't. Today, we celebrate the festival of St John the Evangelist, the patron saint of our church here in Little Thornton. The etched window for St John shows the eagle, the traditional symbol of St John. In his hands, he holds a poisoned chalice with a snake emerging from it. Tradition says that St John was once given a cup of poisoned wine, but he blessed the cup and the poison rose out of the cup in the form of a serpent. He then drank the wine with no ill effect at all. In the gospel reading that we've just heard, Jesus is speaking to Peter. It was the third time since Jesus' resurrection that he had appeared to his disciples. They were on the shore. They'd just eaten a hearty breakfast of grilled fish when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus asked Peter this question three times and it hurt Peter that Jesus had to ask the question three times. But this was reflective of the three times that Peter had denied knowing Jesus on the night when he was arrested. Here on the shore, Jesus gave Peter his pastoral commission, feed my sheep. And Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Now it might have been because Peter was feeling hurt because of Jesus's questioning three times that he wanted to find out. So what will happen to John? Jesus could have answered Peter's question by telling him the journey that John's life would take. And that's what Peter wanted. But instead, he directs him to what's important in his own life. He says to Peter, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? You must follow me. What is it to you? Jesus's reply is designed to focus Peter's attention on his own task that Jesus has commissioned of him and away from becoming preoccupied with the things that quite frankly are none of his business. To focus on what he could do and not on what he couldn't. Peter was being entrusted with enough responsibility of his own to last him a lifetime. Jesus was saying to Peter, never mind the task that's given to someone else. Your job is to follow me. And that's what Jesus still says to each one of us. Never mind the task that I've given to someone else. Do what I have called you to do. It can be hard sometimes for us not to compare our task with the things that others are doing. But each one of us has different skills and abilities. Today, we celebrate the festival of St. John the Evangelist, a witness to the story of Jesus. Each of Jesus's disciples had different personalities, different gifts, skills and abilities, just in the way that each of us has different personalities, different skills, different abilities, all to be used in the service of Christ, trusting in him that he will enable us in his service and to the task which he calls us. Going back to what I said at the beginning about the new ways that we've stepped out and the things that we've encountered, things that we could not have imagined and yet we've been able to do 
seeing people joining on morning prayer, for example, on Zoom, being able to log themselves on rather than having to wait for somebody else to come and do it for them. Getting the skills, acquiring the skills on the way. Each one of us has a calling or ministry in God's kingdom. Something that only you are called to do. And if we get on with doing what we're called to do, we won't have the time to be concerned, to question what is happening with others. What about them? In the way that Peter asked about John. Peter's ministry was to shepherd the sheep of Christ. John the evangelist was to witness to the story of Christ. We read in verse 24, this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Peter and John weren't rivals in honour and prestige, nor one greater and one less than the other. Both were servants of Christ. Each was to focus on what they could do, not on what they couldn't. Therefore, let each of us serve according to how we can. What about you? What is God calling you to do? Are you willing to be where God wants you to be? Are you willing to do what God wants you to do? And if you don't know what that is, why not ask him? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will show to each of us the task that you have set before us, the thing that you call each of us to do, using the skills, the gifts and our abilities. We ask that you will show us. Amen.
Christians around the world. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the God who travels with us through all the changing scenes of this life, whatever we encounter and wherever we find ourselves. Holy God, you sent your Son to be the light in a world lit by candles. Enlighten our hearts to hear the message of your word at this time. In a world thrown into chaos by pandemic and political strife, cast upon us the true light which brings order and peace to all who love him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as the stars and planets reflect your glory, may we read in the created world your message of love for us. Make us wise stewards of your earth. Be with all who seek to protect this world for future generations and instil in all a true sense of responsibility that we own for ourselves rather than leave to others. We pray for those who destroy forests and land, pollute seas and harm habitats for their own greed. Open their eyes to see your light and reveal a better way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as the world is reminded of your love and peace in the words of the carols, may the reality of a God who loves us so much that he sent his Son to die for us transform our social and political thinking and energise plans and negotiations, especially as we trans transition into a new relationship with Europe. May solutions to problems be found which produce trust and fairness for all. We hold in our heart parts of the world in conflict, fighting the virus as they fight one another. Bring peace to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this difficult time for the whole world, where families are unable to see each other as they would wish, we pray that our sacrifices may not be in vain, that all may be united in common purpose to protect each other rather than celebrate in ways which may harm those same loved ones. We thank you that more and more people are seeking you in their need, making connections through your church and finding the true light coming into their lives. May we give thanks for all we have rather than wish we had. We give thanks for all scientists working to ensure there is protection for all through the vaccine. Prosper their work, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are sick at this time, whether through the virus or in other ways. We pray for those awaiting treatment, especially if it has been delayed, and those awaiting a diagnosis. We pray for those whose illness has no physical cause, but feel anxiety and depression, as everyone else seems to be celebrating. We ask for your, your peace which the world cannot give. Be in their hearts and minds at this time. Bless richly all who care for them, whether in hospital or home, as agents of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose earthly journey has come to an end and who now rest in your marvellous light. 
may they ever dwell in your love. We remember those who shared our Christmases years ago and those whose traditions we continue today. We pray for those who are newly bereaved in this Christmas time when loss is felt more keenly. Remind us that our Lord has his hand upon us all and will care for us in all our needs. Lord, we recognise our great need of you at this time and at all times and give you thanks for all mercies shown to us as we place our trust in you. Merciful for joining our prayers together as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We sing together our closing hymn. Just to let you all know, for the next couple of weeks, we won't be having an online service from St John's, but we will make available to you the links for either the diocesan uh, online service or to the Church of England online service. So you will still be able to access a service, it just won't be one that we're doing here at St John's. So that's just for the next couple of weeks, but after that we'll be back to normal or our new normal as it is. Let's see what this year brings. None of us knew at the turn of 2020 what would happen. Let's just see what happens at the start of this new year as we go forward.
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the birth of our Saviour. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.